Well, good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer. I'm going to read again from the book, The Light Invisible, and for our final part of the convent chapel. I perceived that this black figure knelt at the centre of reality and force, and with the movements of her will and lips, controlled spiritual destinies for eternity. There ran out from this peaceful chapel lines of spiritual power that lost themselves in the distance, bewildering in their profusion and terrible in their intensity of their hidden fire. Souls leaped up and renewed the conflict as this tense will strove for them. Souls, even at that moment, leaving the body, struggled from death into spiritual life and fell panting and saved at the feet of the Redeemer on the other side of death. Others, acquiescent and swooning in sin, woke and snarled at the merciful stab of this poor nun's prayers. The priest was trembling now with excitement. Yes, he said, yes. And I, in my stupid arrogance, had thought that my life was more active in God's world than hers. So a small provincial shopkeeper, bustling to and fro behind the counter, might think, if only he were mad enough, that his life was more active and alive than the life of our director who sits at his table in the city. Yes, that is it. It is vulgar. But the only thing I can think of which in the least expresses what I knew to be true. There lay my foolish, narrow life behind me, made up of spiritless prayers and efforts and feeble dealings with souls, and how complacent I had been with it all, how self-centred, how out of the real tide of spiritual movement. And meanwhile, for years probably, this nun had toiled behind these walls in the silence of grace, with the hum of the world coming faintly to her ears, the cries of peoples and nations and of persons whom the world accounts important, sounding like the voices of children at play in the muddy street outside. And indeed that is all they are compared to her, children making mud pies or playing at shop outside the financier's office. The priest was silent and his face became quieter again. Then in a moment he spoke again. Well, he said, that is what I believe to have been an intellectual vision. There was no form or appearance or sound, but I can only express what was shown to me to be true under those images. It almost seems to me as I look back now, as if the air in the chapel were full of a murmurous sound and a luminous mist as the currents of need and grace went to and fro. But I know really that the silence was deep, then I made a foolish remark. If you feel like that about the contemplative life, I wonder you didn't try to enter it yourself. The priest looked at me for a moment. It would be rash, surely, for a little shopkeeper of no particular ability to compete with Rothschild. I read a great quote which said, don't forget to pray, because God didn't forget to wake you up this morning. In the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16, we read that the prayer of a righteous person is both powerful and effective. And that, in essence, is what the story of the convent chapel is all about. Yes, we are locked in, but we are not locked out. And the prayers that we pray today do and will affect what happens tomorrow and the day after and the next day after that into all eternity. We may not ever see the fruit of our prayers in this life, but we can be sure that we will see them in the next. Situations that changed, lives that were transformed, souls even that were redeemed. 
I loved the part of that book which said, there ran out from that peaceful chapel lines of spiritual power that lost themselves in the distance, bewildering in their profusion and terrible in their intensity. What a beautiful picture of prayer. So let's not think things, uh, let's not think about the things that we didn't get after praying rather the countless blessings that God gave us without us even asking. As we continue in this Holy Week, journeying with Jesus, let us spend a little more time with him in prayer. For it may well be, wherever you are in your own convent chapel, that on the backs of your prayers, history will change for someone or for some place because of you. So we're going to begin morning prayer as we did yesterday. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all of the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Today's psalm is Psalm 102, beginning at verse 1. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my crying come before you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me when I call, make haste to answer me. For my days are consumed in smoke, and my burn, bones burn away as in a furnace. My heart is smitten down and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. From the sound of my groaning my bones cleave fast to my skin. I am become like a vulture in the wilderness, like an owl that haunts in ruins. I keep watch, and I am become like a sparrow solitary upon the housetop. My enemies revile me all the day long, and those who rage at me have sworn together against me. I have eaten ashes for bread, and mingled my drink with tears. Because of your indignation and wrath, you have taken me up and cast me down. My days fade away like a shadow, and I am withered like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure for ever, 
and your name throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity upon Zion, for it is time to have mercy upon her. Surely the time has come. For your servants love her very stones and feel compassion for her dust. Then shall the nations fear your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has built up Zion and showed himself in glory, when he has turned to the prayer of the destitute, has not despised their plea. This shall be written for those that come after, and a people yet unborn shall praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So our Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 18. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew that you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb that was led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, beginning at verse 54. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, I am not. And about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord then turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord to him, and how he had said before the cock crows today, you would have denied three times that you even know me. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. And when day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them then asked, Are you the Son of God? And he said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet to the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So let us pray. Father, your Son persevered, and he endured the cross for our redemption. As we prepare to commemorate again the events of his saving passion, keep your church steadfast in its faith. Look after all of those who are joining in with this morning prayer today. Look after their families, their friends. Preserve us, O Lord, from losing heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, your Son knew the darkness at work in Judas' heart. Please forgive the sins that will betray and condemn some for others' gain. Draw us back from taking pleasure in the misfortunes of any. Father, your Son shared fellowship with his friends and those closest to him. In these days, Lord, when we are unable to be with our families and friends, Help us to remember that we shall break bread together once again. Restore us in your image, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Son was troubled in spirit, and he knew the anguish of facing human mortality. Be with all those who cry to you, and Lord, make haste to help them. And in a few moments of quietness, we name before God those who have asked for our prayers. We pray for those who are unwell, those who are facing financial difficulty, and those who are finding this experience really difficult. Lord Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You are the same Jesus who stretched forth your hands and opened the eyes of the blind, who made the lame to walk and who brought life to the dead. Lord, hear our prayer and bring forth your peace to all those who this day need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so standing at the foot of the cross, and as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. do hope that you will join us tomorrow as we do something a little different. We're going to journey with Jesus using the stations of the cross. And so please join us tomorrow at 10 in the morning or later on, if not, um, to, to journey with Christ uh, in the Via Della Rosa. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen.